Calls to action are, of course, a essential component of your B2B website, you know, instrumental in taking buyers on the journey from the point of arrival to the point of ultimate, uh, hopefully, conversion. Um, but there are a number of uh, meanings to the phrase call to action. Uh, there are a number of places where you'll commonly see them used some of which are effective and some of which are less so. And then there are potentially a few places where you'll see them uh, less frequently used, which also could be effective or ineffective. Let's start by clarifying that a call to action means any graphical device which encourages a visitor to go from place A to place B on your website. So that could be any link, any button, any device which compels them to take that step. However, there's another common interpretation of call to action or CTA, which is where you might use your marketing software to produce an analytical package, which you put onto a page to do the same job, but nevertheless in a very different way to a simple link or button. Um, and it's important to have, you know, to, to have clarity about those two different definitions. Um, because they impact the user experience and how well they serve the purpose that you have for them. So if we think about the website and we work our way through it, um, let's look at some of the common places you'll find calls to action and the best practices for them in those places. The most common by far is, of course, the navigation, the, the, the top bar navigation of your website. Um, very common, very uh, sensible to have a call to action permanently visible in the navigation usually on the right hand side is where it's intuitively expected and you know most businesses recognize that it should be a conversion call to action one that encourages a buyer to submit some information in return for something when it comes to choosing your navigation call to action it's very easy to have a catch-all contact us which you know on the face of it is easygoing welcoming flexible but it may not be the best choice in terms of results um, we've certainly seen that b2b buyers like a more specific more defined and more aligned to their goal call to action in the home page navigation Contact us requires a buyer go to a very generic page, explain what it is they're interested in, explain why they're contacting you, and conversion rates on those pages and even visits to them tend to be pretty poor as compared to much more specific calls to action such as talk to sales, book a demo, or take a trial, which increasingly are more attractive to the buyer in terms of what they offer them back for that conversion. So navigation... CTA, very good idea. Be as specific as you can, be as attractive as you can, and if possible, move away from the generic contact us call to action, which is pretty weak and not aligned to what you want buyers to do on your site or what they're there to do on your site. Moving down, you know, we come to the hero section of the site, which is another place where you commonly see one, two, or sometimes three calls to action. And it's a place where B2B marketers find it really, really hard to select the perfect or the right call to action to use in that location. And I think the reason for that is because fundamentally, whatever you put there will underperform compared to your expectations and hopes, simply because of where you are on the site, right? No buyer, for the most part, is ready after just reading the homepage hero headline to click a book a demo CTA there and then. Um, and the reality is that there's probably no ideal choice. There's no secret to success in terms of CTA placement in the hero. It may just be the wrong place in the journey for a buyer to have any real interest in any CTA, be it a click through to the product page, be it a bottom of the funnel request, be it anything, be it pricing. They're not, they're not inclined to use CTAs in those locations. I'm tempted to suggest that everybody test 
ha- their website with no CTA in the hero section, uh, given how poorly they typically are engaged with. Um, and there did there is one study out there where that was tested and did increase overall site conversions when there was no CTA. So I think the homepage hero is one section where you can. Um, you know, perhaps give yourself a bit of a break and, and, and try without. Less is sometimes more after all. If we scroll down the website some more, on almost any page, it's not unusual to find a banner CTA at the end of the page before the footer. It's another place where marketers typically feel you know, compelled to put a call to action to end that uh, visitor's journey down that page. It, it feels like the right thing to do to try to convert them there and then into some kind of lead, be it a top of the funnel content lead or a more qualified bottom of the funnel lead. Like the hero section though, again, those CTAs typically perform pretty poorly. Buyers are just not inclined to click on them. Um, and they can be quite a headache to you know, come up with and to replace over time. And again, I'm inclined to suggest that marketers just ditch those CTAs. They're not part of the buyer's ideal journey. You've got CTAs for the buyer to use in the hero navigation, in the footer most likely, and throughout the page they've just traveled down. That last ditch bottom of the funnel conversion offer at the end of every page isn't adding any value to the buyer's experience and therefore could probably um, do with being removed and not harm your performance. So a less effective place to use a CTA. Throughout the homepage and all the pages of your website, you're going to have navigational links, which are in effect calls to action because they tell a, a visitor uh, where they can go and where they should go um, you know, as they consume the content on your page. This is a place where it's the best advice I can give is to not use your software to create those CTAs. CTAs, when created in software for analytical purposes, you know, typically are going to impact site performance and page speed somewhat incrementally in a small way, but nevertheless, the impact is there. And they mask the destination of a link, a standard simple link from page one to page two. They mask the destination of that link from the visitor as they're navigating the website. We all know how reassuring it is to hover our mouse over a link, especially one that isn't crystal clear about where it's sending you. Text like discover more, learn more, read more, you know, doesn't tell you where you're going. So we hover our mouse over it and our browser in most cases will show us the destination and we'll use that information to choose whether we're going to follow that link or not but a cta in the analytical sense will most likely mask that information so you've now got a button that doesn't necessarily convey any meaning discover more a link which doesn't convey any meaning and both of those things are going to work against your buyer's desire to follow that link um, you know against your wishes really so be careful where you use your analytical CTAs because they could be harming the user experience and your results rather than improving your insights and ability to optimize um, and let's be clear you know the analytics that you get from a CTA a software powered CTA you know can only be used to iteratively improve call to action performance if there's enough content within that call to action to be variated you know, you can't deduce from data what it is about discover more that is less or more attractive than any other version of the same phrase. There's just not enough content there to be um, to, for it to be effective. A place where calls to action and indeed those software powered analytical CTAs are uh, very commonly used and, and pretty effective is within your blog content. Um, now, when it comes to blog content, the priority is the reading experience and the legibility, the readability of the content. The vast majority of visitors are coming from a search engine or from some other f channel of discovery to see and read what's there, nothing else for the most part, and leave. We should focus everything on making that experience a high quality one for them sidebars and calls to action within those sidebars are a no-no because they are simply 
superfluous to the buyer's needs and desires when they're on your blog post. They are not there to navigate your website using your blog sidebar to find recent posts in the same topic, archives, tags, or to click CTAs for conversion offers there, or to subscribe, or to socially share. They won't do any of those things. And if you have a sidebar cluttering your content with those things, you are diluting attention, you are diluting engagement, you're diluting clicks on calls to action and conversions. Um, so there's really no upside, there's no gain to having a busy sidebar full of calls to action. Where calls to action work are predominantly two locations. At the very end of a blog post, if and when a reader arrives, their banner blindness goes away to a degree. A visual CTA with a offer, a bit of creative and a value proposition is a good way to turn some of the readers that have reached the end of the blog post into people that click and go to your pillar page or your resource or to your bottom of the funnel page, although that may not result in that many conversions given the nature of the visitor that's reading your blog content. Nevertheless, banner CTAs, end of the blog post, work relatively well. The other place to use calls to action and analytical CTAs in your blog posts, which is less commonly seen, is the text call to action earlier on in the post. The majority of readers will not read to the end. The majority of readers will skim read, get about a third or a half of the way down and exit. Your data will confirm it. Your data will tell you that. Your heat maps will also show you uh, how far people are scrolling. The majority of visitors are leaving before the end. A banner CTA midway through a blog post typically doesn't perform well because banner blindness is in effect. And so you can put a banner there, but you likely won't see readers click on it for that reason. Much better to use a text version of a similar CTA, a value proposition about an offer or a piece of content, but in text format. I like to recommend that they stand out just enough from the copy of the, of the, from the body of the blog so a reader can detect easily that it's different, it's a, it's a link, it's a call to action, but not, be not so different that it's very disruptive if you are just trying to read and go straight past it and, and carry on with the flow. If you get that just right, get the balance of standing out and blending in just right with a text CTA, you can take another percentage of readers, the, of the readers that will not reach the end, and move them onto a pillar page where they can learn more about your credibility and your expertise or, or elsewhere in the site. And that's another good way to use CTAs in your website that will positively drive clicks and conversions um, and one that's less commonly uh, utilized. Thank you.